and welcome to Healing Waters of Bethsaida. My name is Michael, and today I'm bringing you a message uh, from the Lord. I was just kind of praying what to share, and I kind of feel like the title is uh, basically the peace of God may not be what you actually want. And that's actually kind of a negative uh, takeaway. <clears throat> there was an event that happened in my life uh, some time ago. And I'm supposed to meet with some people and discuss stuff and all that. And I was like praying on this beforehand. And I feel like, I felt like God was saying, I'm going to give you my peace. He didn't say he was going to give me what I wanted. Alright. But he said he was going to give me his peace. And I was kind of like, well, that's not what I was praying about. <laughs> but I am thankful that God did give me his peace in that time. And sometimes we got to learn to value God's peace. And oftentimes we don't because we're going after the things that we want. All right. And because we're going after the things that we want, we don't have God's peace in our life. And so God's peace may not look the way that you describe God's peace. But. Let's, let's just get into this, into the word today. So we're going into Jeremiah chapter 6, uh, 16 through 19 to start us off. Let me find where we are. All right. <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, wherein the good way, and walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. All right, so what is he saying? It's like, you know, find the good way to walk. Where is the Lord leading you to walk in? Not where you want to walk, because that's not going to bring the peace of God upon your life, okay? But they, what do they say? But they say, we will not walk therein. So they're not, because they're not going to, they're not willing to walk in the old paths and seek the old paths. They're not going to find God's rest and peace. Also, I set watchmen over them, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet, but that he said, We will not hearken. So God's saying again, You were supposed to seek. Then I sent warning messages, and now you're in the last stage of it all. Therefore, hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, evil the, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words nor to my law, but rejected it. So, anyways, <clears throat> what is he saying here? You know, it's like, first off, in 19, it says the fruits of their thoughts. Well, if their thoughts are all um, evil, they're going to reap evil because of their thoughts. Yeah, think about that. And it's not just because, oh, you just had a random thought that popped in your head. Well, if you're thinking about that for a good five, couple minutes, five minutes, a couple hours, what are you doing? You're producing a evil re a harvest for yourself, aren't you? Because those are your thoughts, and you're not thinking on God's thoughts. But they reject God's word, so they don't want to walk in God's path. And uh, Isaiah chapter three verses uh, 11 and 12 woe well unto the wicked it shall be ill with him for the reward of his hand shall be given him all right so they're gonna have an ill it's gonna be ill it's gonna be there's gonna be sick well maybe not sick sick but their life is gonna be sick in a sense as for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the ways of thy paths. Well, we just talked about the paths, didn't we? We just talked about what? The old paths, didn't we? And uh, Jeremiah talks about seeking after the old paths. 
you know, seek the old paths. But he's saying here, you know, they're evil. And then the people that are above them are evil, in a sense. And so they're oppressing them and destroying those paths. So no wonder people are having a hard time finding the old path. But he said to seek those old paths. Because those old paths are being destroyed. So you're going to have to find those old paths that were destroyed, weren't you? You're going to have to find a new way to live. And God is not mocked. Oftentimes people always say they want the peace of God. Why isn't God doing this? Well, you're not walking in God's path and you're not seeking his paths. And so a lot of times people want the peace of God, but they really don't want the peace of God because they want what they want. They don't want to go in the direction that the Lord is leading them to go. And so they say, they, why is God doing this? Well, he's already laid out a path for you, for you to seek after, but you're not willing to go after that path. And sometimes it's got to be a humbleness, even in, our, even in me, that says, okay, Lord, I got to learn that your path and your ways are better than mine. And sometimes there's a learning curve in that. Like I said earlier, it's like I, when I was praying for something, it's what God said, I want, I'm giving you my peace. So like, well, I, I was wanting this, Lord, not your peace. But I was like, afterwards, I was like, I'm thankful for God's peace. And I rebuked those words. And I was like, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not wanting your peace. And I think we gotta sit, we come before God and it's like, God, forgive me for not wanting your peace, but wanting my own way. And I don't think you've ever heard anybody talk about that, but oftentimes I think we gotta repent. It's like, Lord, I'm sorry for rejecting your peace, Lord. And help me to walk in your ways and your paths, and not my own ways, Lord. And not for the things that I want, but yours things, Lord. And that's really the heart of the matter, isn't it? Isaiah 7, uh, was it, uh, 5 through 14 here. <clears throat> and this is, uh, the thing that has happened. Uh, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Rambachin and Rimanha have taken evil, evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of uh, Tambel. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus has risen. And within sixty or three score, that's uh, basically sixty and five years. So sixty-five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Rehmahel's son. And if ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Moreover, the word of the Lord spoke on again unto Azel, and this is uh, to Azel of, uh, let's see here, Azel, the son of Shotham, the son of Uriah, the king of Judah. Okay, that's the um, one we're talking about here. And moreover, the Lord said unto Azel, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, ask it neither in the depths or in the heights above. For Azel said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but ye will weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. All right, so I want to break down a few things first here. First, there's the evil counsel that was going against him. And I just want to point out that this king at this time was not one that did right by the Lord. He even offered uh, his sons and daughters to the fire. 
All right, or basically in modern sense, abortion, if you want to put it that way. But they were alive and kicking and screaming and being burned alive. Yeah, that's not a good thing. <clears throat> so this guy was not very right with the Lord. But here's the interesting thing. The Lord basically is like, if ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. So he's like, there's a belief or a faith that has to be transpired with this. All right, that he's saying. And then he's like, okay, ask a sign. He's like, no, I'm not going to tempt the Lord. Okay. There's a difference between saying, oh, I'm not going to tempt the Lord like Jesus tempted the Lord. But here he's saying, the Lord's giving you a chance to give you a sign to build your faith. But you're rejecting that sign, aren't you? So here's the thing that he says after that. Were you weary men? And sometimes it means, uh, will you be patient? Will you weary them? You know, will you wear out their patience? And so in a sense, he's thinking like, oh, I'm not going to test the Lord. He's saying, it's like, no, you're doing wrong. All right? So, there's a two contrasts here. One, you have Jesus, this, and the devil's coming to him. All right, so this is kind of a thing. And the devil's tempting him, and the Lord, or Jesus basically says, like, I'm not going to test, tempt the Lord, or test the Lord my God. But here, it's totally different. The Lord is saying, ask for a sign. Maybe God's asking you to give you a sign, or asking you to give you a sign through this. I don't know. But he's saying, it's like, no, we're not going to ask for a sign. I'm not going to ask for a sign. Because I'm going to be, I'll be tempted the Lord. But there's two contrasts here. We see it's the devil that's bringing the temptation. But here it's God saying, hey, I want to build your faith. All right, so there's two different ways here, but we see in the Bible there's two different answers. And even though he's saying, I'm not going to test the Lord, he's actually being unrighteous in that point, in that point, you know. And so I've had the Lord give me signs, and they have helped me build my faith, all right, and the direction that the Lord is leading me to be. Uh, and even when I was coming to Kokomo, it's like there's signs here, signs there. The Lord was giving me a sign. And people was like, well, you're not supposed to test, tempt the Lord or test the Lord. It's like, no, no, no. The Lord, If the Lord is giving you the signs, it's a blessing and a way to build your faith. You know, hearing comes by faith. Well, how do you hear? Well, sometimes it's here. you may not be hearing, but you can sometimes see. You know, as you're seeing, you're reading those words on the Bible. All right, so you're using your ears in a sense, but your spiritual eyes. And so when you sometimes people don't see the signs that are around them because they are not spiritually in tune with God's spirit. And as you're in tune with God's spirit, you start seeing the signs that God's laying out to you. And as you're seeing those signs, it helps build your faith. All right? And I just want to share a quick dream here that I, wanted, that I had uh, right after preparing this. I kind of fell asleep. And it was kind of quick snippets here and there, so I'm not going through all the details because I don't remember all the details. But it was one of something about a race going on, and this guy was kind of like trying to usurp it or something, and I kind of revealed some stuff during that race. So then I was actually, because I revealed stuff, I was then allowed to be able to race. And so, you know, we got to seek those old paths, and sometimes... Uh, Going through different races of life and different seasons can sometimes feel like a race and seeking those old paths. And I remember this dream switch and there was like a big radio announcement and this family that claimed to be a Christian 
And this one person that was in the family, it might have been that person from before, was being exposed on radio for their evil deeds. And then the whole household was being exposed for their evil deeds also. And the whole thing was like I was seeing inside the house and as they're leaving, I'm like, hey, can I have all your stuff? You know, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous, is it not? She said, yeah, sure, all except for that one stuffed animal. And as she was leaving, I was like, okay. And so I just took the animal, and as I'm taking the animal, I guess she came back, and her daughter took it. I'm like, okay, so out of all the stuff, and I kind of felt like the child was more the innocent victim. I mean, I could be completely wrong in understanding that. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't really fully prayed on that. But I kind of was sensing, like, you know, she hadn't grown up and had her own, uh, she hadn't been pushed into the way the family was running. All right. And it's kind of what I was sensing. And so she was able to keep her stuffed bear. It was kind of a rather big bear. It was almost the size of her. So I'm not saying I fully understand that. If you have more understanding on that part, blessings to you and please share in the comments. But the one thing I want to end up on is in Daniel, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I just kind of like what he was saying here in Daniel 3, uh, 17 and 18. And this is as they hadn't bowed down to the golden image or anything of that name. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fierce furnace... And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So we see here that those three, they had the faith, they knew God could deliver them. Even in the midst of where they were. All right, and, and I just feel like I gotta do this in the um, in sixteen. It also says right before that, it's like, "Oh Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner." So they're not trying to play words or anything like that. They're being bold, saying what they want, and we know that they del that God did deliver them. But here's the thing. It's like, even if the Lord doesn't deliver us from the circumstances, we will not bow down nor serve those golden images. And oftentimes, how do we say this? We get this mentality sometimes that, Oh, well, all this evil's happening. There's no deliverance that's going to happen. And that can be completely a false assumption. Because sometimes they knew God was able to deliver them. And you think about all the people that was martyred throughout history. Uh, I was thinking of some of the people, like, they would burn on the stake for three hours, being alive, roasted alive in a fire, preaching the gospel of God. And converting people. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're in a fire, and fire is coming up to, like, your waist, and you're not dead yet, and you're not screaming in agony and pain, but you're able to preach God's word for three hours... And you think about that. They were in the midst of the fire being burned alive. And that's supernatural to be alive for a good three hours before they can even, before they even die. And I'm sure they're trying to add as much fire, flame to the fire to kill them from preaching to other people to keep them from... Uh, being able to witness to the other people that's 
converting them. Think about that. Because they want them dead as soon as possible because they're basically warning. He, I remember hearing about this letter was sent to this other parishioner. It's like, no, go kill the, the Anabaptist, I think it was, in the forest because otherwise you'll have another hundred if you burn them at the stake. <laughs> so we don't always know how God is going to react sometimes or how God is going to deliver us. And sometimes that deliverance may come in the form of death for some people. Especially when we get into the end times and the Antichrist and all that stuff. And some people have seen that they're going to be a martyr and some people haven't seen that they're going to be a martyr. But if the Lord is able to deliver you, but even if the Lord is not able to deliver you, are you still willing to follow the Lord? Because if you're still willing to follow the Lord, even if he's not delivering you, guess what? You're still going to have God's peace in that time, in that season. Even though you're having much tribulation, you're still going to be able to have God's peace rest upon you and your soul and the fine rest. And I pray that whatever trials you may be going through in these light afflictions, Nothing compares to what we have in Christ. So I'm praying that you would find God's peace and his rest and seek his paths. In Jesus' name. And Lord, grant them the supernatural ability to hear and to see the signs that you have laid out for them. And that they would find old paths that have been destroyed, Lord. And that they would start building forth the new road to Jerusalem. And to your heavenly kingdom, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And blessings to you all. Bye.